So with the Xbox Game Showcase Halo Infinite gameplay failing to impress visually, their biggest announced titles shown likely being two to three years away from being ready, a lot of the smaller games failing to garner any interest from the majority of the gamers, all games shown releasing on PC, most on the Xbox One, and some only being timed exclusives, most people agree that Microsoft's July event failed to sell them on getting an Xbox Series X at launch. Instead, they focus more on selling people on Game Pass. And because of that, now it's looking like the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 hardware sales are gonna look like a repeat of the PS4 versus the Xbox One, and that once again, the PS4 and Sony are gonna dominate the console market share. Now, while their focus is to sell you on Game Pass if the Series X sells poorly, that's just bad news for the future of Xbox hardware, and it greatly limits their pool of potential customers for Game Pass, or Game Pass subscribers if people just aren't buying Xboxes. But there is one way the Xbox Series X can beat the PlayStation 5, or at least give the PS5 a run for its money. And it's not games, because it's too late for that, it's not like they're gonna go ahead at this point, change anything major, add a major game to the launch lineup, so what is it then? Microsoft needs to make the Xbox Series X free. Calm down, I'm kidding. Anyways, now seriously, what they actually need to do is provide value that's too much for gamers to ignore, and I'm not talking about Game Pass, because clearly that value wasn't enough to leave gamers happy with the Xbox Game Showcase. See, Game Pass, yes, it might be the greatest value out there when it comes to gaming services, but people are forgetting that for console gamers at least, keep in mind it's a console, not PC, mobile, or anything like that, to get access to that value in the first place, this holiday, they'll need to go ahead and make a major investment that will cost them about four to $500, aka get an Xbox Series X if they want the latest and greatest versions of those games and the problem is Microsoft is facing the same company this holiday that's beat them time and time again and that has got more market share worldwide and it's giving customers big reasons to purchase their newest consoles as they can get games they can't get anywhere else on the PlayStation 5 for around the same price. And with PlayStation's recent PlayStation 5 reveal event getting better reactions, better reception from players, and with there being over 100 million PlayStation 4 gamers out there worldwide compared to around 50 million for the Xbox One, and most console buyers only getting one out of the two consoles, where do you think gamers are going to go at this point? PlayStation and the PS5 where they're also going to have the added benefit of being able to bring over their PS4 library onto the newer console. Console. And because no matter how much cheaper the software, aka the games, are going to be on Xbox because of Game Pass, if that upfront cost, if that point of entry, that price of entry, if both consoles is going to be the same or an insignificant price difference between the two, the majority of the gamers are once again going to go with PlayStation. And that's why Microsoft needs to fully go into the greatest value in gaming routes, not just in terms of Game Pass, but other services, and especially when it comes to the hardware. Hardware. So it's quite simple. Sony's coming out with two versions of the PS5. Regular version and the digital, which is just the same thing, same specs. Only difference is the digital version does not come with a disk drive. So the rumor pricing for the PS5 is about 500 So we'll go with that. And as far as the digital version, it's likely going to be $50 to $100 cheaper than the standard version. The best point of reference would be the Xbox All Digital Edition and the difference between that and the regular Xbox One, which is 50 bucks. but I don't think the Xbox Sad Edition did all that well, and I think Sony knows that, so I feel like Sony would likely go with more aggressive pricing with the digital version and probably go with a price of $400. So let's just say the PS5 will be 500 US and the PS5 all digital 400, so 100 price difference there. Now while currently Microsoft has only officially announced one version of the new Xbox, it's been heavily rumored before Sony even revealed that there's two versions of the PS5 that there would be a cheaper version of the Xbox Series X as well and that the difference between the two Xbox consoles would be that the cheaper version would not only not have a disk drive but also a less powerful GPU. And I'm sure you guys have seen the mock-up image or fan-made image everywhere. It's that tiny white Xbox Series X 
that people are thinking is going to be called the Xbox Series S. Now, when it comes to Microsoft's rumored pricing, I'll get to that later, but here's what Xbox needs to do. First off, the Xbox Series X definitely needs to be cheaper than the PS5, but I understand they can't make it too much cheaper, though, because even though the console manufacturers have sold consoles at a loss before, no one's trying to lose too much money on every single console sold, even if their goal is to make back the losses with software and services. So if the PS5 ends up being 500, the Series X needs to be $400. Cause yo, if they do 450, that's just not enough of a significant price difference between the two. Cause think about it, for like a PlayStation gamer, getting an Xbox Series X instead of a PS5 is not just a different console, but they'd be losing the ability to bring over their PS4 games, uh, their PlayStation ID, their save games, any PS4 accessories or controllers that might be compatible with the PS5, they'd be losing all of that. So you gotta make it worth losing all that, or almost worth. So anyways, moving on, ideally they gotta make the Series X the same price as the PS5 Digital Edition or even cheaper. That'd be the best move because then potential PlayStation buyers would like to save a bit of money by getting the Digital Edition would then be given a reason to consider Microsoft's top offering in the Xbox Series X over Sony's second best offering, the Digital Edition, because with the Xbox for the same price they'd be getting a more powerful console, a disk drive for the option to get physical games, and you know, you got some deals sometimes that are just for physical games, not digital, cheaper first party games as the result of Game Pass and also something else, which I'll get to in just a few moments, all for the same price as a PS5 with no option to get physical games. And now for the Series S, with it not just being a diskless system, but also having a weaker GPU, it's got the advantage of likely being the cheapest next-gen console out of the four. So if the PS5 Digital Edition ends up being 400, the Series S needs to take advantage of cheaper hardware by at least, at the very least, being $100 cheaper, but ideally $100. $150 cheaper than the digital version of the PlayStation 5, which would put it at $250. And at that price, the Series X would be in a really good position to sell a lot of units based on value alone. I'd like to have a bunch of gamers seriously considering it over the PS5 due to the huge price difference, especially those thinking about the digital edition of Sony's console, because the Series X, if they don't care too much about the resolution, would also give them the advantage of offering them cheaper first-party games digitally thanks to Game Pass. And finally, while having all or most Xbox games be available on PC and Xbox One might be a disadvantage in the case of getting some people over to the new console, in the case of value, it can actually be an advantage for Microsoft. Because with most of the games also being available on Xbox One for the first two years or so, that allows them to give users an even cheaper option to get the latest Xbox games at an even cheaper price. And what's that option? The Xbox One. They need to give the Xbox One a price cut and make it $100 cheaper than the Series S, and that would give console gamers who want the cheapest possible point of entry to play the latest Xbox games, including Halo, a super cheap option to do so. And the reason why this would likely all work is ever since the 360 and PS3 days, history has shown that when one of them, Xbox or Sony, is significantly cheaper than the other, it makes a big difference, and that console tends to sell more. The best example was how the 360 kept outselling the PS3 for years due to Sony's console being significantly more expensive. The 60 gigabyte PlayStation 3 for 599 US dollars. Despite Sony being the more established brand of the two and online play being free on the PS3 as opposed to on the Xbox 360, because of the PS3 being $200 more expensive than the 360, people kept on buying the 360 more than the PS3 for years until of course, Sony went ahead and reduced their price. And even in this generation with the PS4 and Xbox One, whenever Microsoft would have those big Xbox One deals during the holidays where it'd be cheaper and you'd also have have bundled games in there, they would beat the PS4 in those months, showing that the difference in upfront console price matters big time and is probably the most important factor in terms of value for most customers. Now, real quick note, because I know people might bring up this possibility, in the unlikely case the PS5 ends up being 400 and the digital 300, the Microsoft would just go ahead and match the price of the PS5 or settle of an undercut of 50 bucks, which yeah, like I said, isn't much, but I highly doubt we'd see the Series X at 300. And then it can go ahead and offer up the bigger price difference by making the Series S 199 and going as low as 150 with the 1S. And finally, to top it all off, to offer the greatest value in every single way, 
Microsoft goes through with making Xbox Live Gold free, giving the Xbox a major advantage and making Xbox the only consoles on the market to offer free online play. And the good news is, when it comes to both the Xboxes being cheaper than the PS5 and Xbox Live Gold going free, there's interviews and rumors supporting both those things are actually in Microsoft's plans anyways. For instance, in regards to hardware price back in November, in an interview with The Verge, Phil Spencer said this, I would say a learning from the Xbox One generation is we will not be out of position on power or price. If you remember the beginning of this generation, we were $100 more expensive and yes, we were less powerful and we started Project Scarlet aka Xbox Series X with this leadership team in place with a goal of having market success. Then in April with IGN. You have to set a, a price target at the beginning for yourselves and then you kind of roll in as you see the, comp the, the competition come in and start to do your go-to-market planning I feel uh, good about no, the price that we're going to be able to get to. I feel good about the price. You know, last week you guys were talking a little bit about Xbox All Access and the way the pricing of these consoles has actually changed a little bit now with so many people taking advantage of kind of, of acquiring your console in more of a subscription motion, or almost right. more the way you get a phone as opposed to um, an all-in-one yeah, price. We're definitely going to be continuing to keep our eyes wide open as we go towards launch. Um, looking at what the competition is doing. But, you know, we have a plan and we feel very solid about our plan. Um, we think it's a winning plan. And when it comes to the Series S pricing, the latest rumor from an insider suggests that the console could be half the price of the Series X. So this all points at this being Microsoft's actual plan to outvalue Sony in every single way. And as far as online play going free, I made a bunch of videos on that, which you can check out on the screen or in the description. But bottom line is, if they do this... Xbox will become the best value in the console space in software, online play, and hardware, which could result in Xbox beating the PlayStation 5. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. I'm out. See ya.